Welcome to episode seven of summarizing things from Fast Day and things Jeremy says to do. I'm joined by Rob again on the series. Rob, thanks for joining me again. Yeah, great to be here. Okay, like always, I'll go back and summarize the lecture, and then I let it let you take it from there. This is the final lecture, so of course, as you might expect, there would be a lot of things going on, and you can always take your time with Fast Day. With that disclaimer out of the way, this lecture talks about creating ResNets from scratch. Units and GANs, generative adversarial networks. We learn about skip connections, which is the essence to ResNets. ResNets are covered throughout the lectures, so you should be really familiar with them. Don't just listen to this podcast; go back and watch the lectures. And after we've done that, that skip connection theory also lets us understand the unit architecture better, better, which is a different type of skip connections to greatly improve segmentation results. and this is the part where we go back to our segmentation problem and really improve it units were one of the like re- really recent discoveries at least for the 2019 course one year things change a lot unit also lets us train a super resolution model what that lets you do is take a crappy photo and really improve its resolution we also learn how to decrappify photos which means like removing garbage from the image or removing watermarks from the image after that we learn how to create custom loss functions including uh, fe- and how to incorporate feature loss also known as perceptual loss if you don't understand it it's it's okay it's better to have an intuition rather than knowing the jargon and we use this along with gram loss these techniques can be used for many other types of image generation tasks including the famous deoldification Finally, we learn about something that really has sparked off an uh, interesting uh, direction in GANs, which is recent uh, loss functions, generative adversarial loss, and what that lets you do is train GANs much, much more quickly and reliably by using transfer learning and combining architecture and loss function in a way that hasn't been combined before. That's another thing that we get exposed to in this lecture. that's i think the final lecture and uh, that's the summary for it the results really blew me away at least in terms of time in terms of when this was revealed uh, i think i think i've covered it you probably missed some stuff because this lecture just had so much in it and it's Fair really enough. incredible you're just doing cool stuff the entire time uh, and that's a great segue into the advice jeremy gives he says don't let this lesson intimidate you it's meant to be intense there's 6 months between the classes and this lecture was designed to keep you busy and to give you ideas of stuff to play around with until part 2 comes out very so very 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 that. literally very literally <laughs> yeah it was one of the coolest lectures uh i love the stuff about uh uh making gans and doing feature loss uh just really interesting uh cool stuff for sure um more advice going forward of what you can do after the course write code and put it on github it doesn't matter if it's great code or not uh writing it and sharing is enough you'll get feedback from your peers and you'll improve uh i can definitely say this is advice i followed and i'm really glad i did uh for me in the beginning github was a huge struggle just being able to push code and then you get into like a detached head state and your life is just your day is just ruined because <laughs> no clue what's going on git was really challenging for me but now that i feel comfortable with it and i spent some time with it uh i think it's a really important part of a workflow uh just being i couldn't imagine not using it not being able to push code between my different devices and not being able to revert and go back to something that i accidentally broke uh so it's really worth the investment and then putting yourself out there you get a lot of feedback from people uh and that will make you a better coder and a better practitioner for sure um last piece is one more thing you can do in this gap after the course ends is it's time to start reading papers uh especially some of the ones introduced in the course you may have uh opened them up and taken a look at them earlier but it's really important at this point to try and start to understand them uh jeremy suggests learning the names of the greek letters this is essential uh, he makes an awesome point i never thought of but it's impossible to read the math from a paper if you're saying uh squiggly something times upside down y equals 
Uh, so really great advice. I actually made an Anki deck uh, for people for the Greek letters. Uh, it's just a quick, easy way to get exposed to them and memorize them. So we can share that. But I made that during the course as like a little project to help people learn Greek letters. And that's how I taught myself. So now when I'm reading papers and there's a random row in there or new, uh, it just kind of flows and it makes things so much easier to read and understand. Uh, more information on papers. Jeremy says all the parts that say derivations, theorems, lemmas, that's not the practical stuff. Feel free to <laughs> skip those. They will add nothing to your understanding of practical deep learning. He's very adamant about this. He says read the parts where they talk about why they're solving this problem and the results. And another great piece of advice, try and take this paper and explain it to yourself six months ago. And in doing so, you'll do two things. We've talked about this in the education podcast. You will really complete your understanding and find those little parts that you don't totally understand and explaining it to someone else forces you to understand it. And two, you'll make the path for the next generation a little bit easier uh, because you're in the best position to explain it to them. Sometimes when we internalize a concept and we've known it for five years, it's really hard to have the perspective of a beginner. When you're writing to someone yourself six months ago, you still are intimately in touch with what that feels like and how confusing it can be and what parts are confusing. So. For sure. And uh, I have never liked summer vacation uh, homework. We have that in India. So if you <laughs> aren't excited about reading papers, I can promise you. And this is again, not like, I think this is similar to Jeremy's advice, but go out and do as many Kaggle competitions as you want. That will eventually trickle your way into reading papers only to uh, implement them under that short time frame, doing it in a very practical fashion. So if you aren't excited about reading papers, go out, solve problems or do Kaggle competitions. Yeah, that's excellent advice. Don't read papers for the sake of reading papers or feel like you should. Uh, it's really good if you get into a specific problem you're working on and you're thinking, how can I make this better? Uh, go find the papers in that domain and for your application and try and implement them. And that's a good way. If you just pick up a random paper and you say, I'm going to read this today, it's, it's an uphill battle. For sure. And with that, I think we've covered part one of 2019 courses. That's it. Awesome. Thanks again, Rob. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>